hello everybody welcome to the channel so on today's video we are learning how to do this elastic or shad pants that's how they are looking as well if you want to know how to do shad dresses or a skirt or a top i'll link those videos down below i have done tutorials on them before but today we are working on these pants this was actually suggested by maggie who is a subscriber over here so thank you maggie for, for suggesting this and let's go straight ahead and do this tutorial so this is the fabric we are using as you have already seen and and i have folded it in 15 inches so this 15 inches represent like quarter the pants um because my hip measurement is usually 40 41 inches so a quarter of my hip is is 10.5 so that's included there plus this fold includes uh, two inches for the for the crotch the curve that comes the crotch area that's two inches and then this extra three or 2.5 inches is for the ease because we are making a shard pant we need a lot of allowance so this extra two and a half inches are for allowance and what else so yeah if you're making your pants just um depending on how much your the quarter of your hip is you're going to add around 4.5 inches for the crotch allowance as well as is for the sharing so going straight ahead into cutting my fabric okay i have to mention that i'm not going to be cutting two front sides and then two back sides i'll be cutting one side that has a front and a back yeah i'll cut two pieces one that has front back and the other one that has front back i hope that makes sense but in short this line here i'm not going to interfere with this side it's going to just represent the side seam like the side seam oh no 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 like where a seam would be on pants here this is what this line is going to be but it's going to remain on fold i'm not going to interfere with this line i'm just going to cut the inside seam as well as the crotch seam for both the front and the back i hope that makes sense so going straight into it the length of my the length of my pants is 34 inches i'm a short girl so i'm going to add just one inch okay let me add one and a half inches for hemming the waist for hemming the waistline because we are not going to include our waistband it's just going to be a hemmed waistline so here's the front waistline I'm going to just make it straight So from the waistline going down i'll mark nine nine inches is for my hip and 11 inches is for the crotch and i'm going to square these two lines across like that So on this line for the waist, I am going to mark, um, because these pants are not going to have an opening, so there's no zip or buttons or anything like that, and they're supposed to be easy to wear, the, the hip line as well as the waist are going to measure the same. I hope I'm making sense. So that, because my hip is supposed to be 10.5 plus two and a half inches for lines that's 12.5 that's the same measurement i'm going to use for my waist 12.5 inches and then i'm going to connect it to the hip line and then because this is the crotch line i'm going to curve it like that to create the crotch 
so that's that with that and then for the bottom I'm just going to to mark it at 8 inches and then curve it in like that I know it's a weird shape <laughs> But try to just curve it so that it makes sense. There's no bulges. So that's it. I'm going to cut the... So this is the front of the pants and I'm just going to cut off to work on the back. So this pattern below is the is representing the back and for the waistline I'm going to just raise it to raise it over here 1.5 inches and connect it to this other line. You just raise your back 1.5 inches because you know the back your back is not shaped the way your front is we have hips we have the bum and that's why we have to do that as well at the crotch area just because of the same anatomy issues bum etc I'm going to add two inches Ooh. My eyeballing skills are really good. <laughs> so I'm going to add two inches and then I'm going to connect this with a curve. All the way to that line. So this is the back crotch. And then I'm just going to Continue with this to the hemline of the pants. So for this line, for me actually the way I do it, it doesn't really matter if the distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to here. For as long as they match, that's what I do. So I'm going to cut it off and we shall be done with the one so from here what we have this is the front this side and this side is the back and so we won't have a side seam but we'll have an inseam and crotch seam so i'm going to cut an exact replica i'm going to cut this exact same pattern from here so i've put the one i just cut on top of this one and I'm going to cut I'm going to cut the second piece because the fabric uh, right side and other side are quite similar I think you cannot tell from the camera but I'm just going to do it So this is the 
the truth is it's for our pride. But <laughs> so for sewing you need your regular thread take a color that is uh, a color that matches your fabric and then I'm using elastic thread the black one is elastic thread I ended up using around one and a half uh, of this spoolie is it a spoolie or a one and a half of the elastic bundles spoolies anyway so as well i threaded my bobbin using hand because you want to to have tension on the elastic so you pull on the elastic as you thread it because if you thread on the machine the tension is not going to be as much so just thread using your hand onto the bobbin next thing um, thread your the top thread just normally the way you would when sewing any other thing and then we are going to loosen the bobbin case you want to loosen the bobbin case because of the elastic thread is thicker than regular thread so if you go ahead and sew when the bobbin case is tight the tension won't like it won't sew the sharing well i hope it makes sense just because the thread is thicker you want the bobbin case to be a bit loose to allow the thick elastic to go through freely so from there you are ready to sew but before you actually start doing the sewing you can test it on a fabric just to see if the tension of the sharing and the stitches are okay before you actually start doing it but if you so I have done some lines of sharing and this is what we have so far I have used one bobbin case of elastic thread one bobbin of elastic thread so I decided to just do the two patterns and connect them like that at the edge at the very edge and I'll separate them later because I didn't want to do one piece finish it and then do the other piece because i also want the lines to be a little more equal so i decided to do the two pattern pieces at the same go but i'm not um at the place where they are joining i'm not physically joining them okay you'll see as i go how i'm going about the sharing for the two patterns So when I get to one edge, I just reinforce it and then skip over to the next edge, reinforce and go ahead with the sharing. And then when I reach the edge, I just turn the fabric to do the next line. The lines of sharing are half an inch, uh, separated by half an inch. So from one line of sharing to the next, I have about half an inch but I'm eyeballing the half an inch if you can't please you can use a ruler to mark all the lines where you'll be doing the sharing so this is another thing I wanted to point out as you sew you can go ahead and stretch your sharing to make sure that there is no tension because sometimes your bobbin could get caught or something happens with the tension in the bobbin case and then you know just the tension of the whatever you're sewing the sharing becomes tighter so every once in a while just try to stretch your sharing make sure there's no uh, there's no tension like just make sure your sharing stretches correctly or stretch as well 
before you continue and if there's a problem with the tension just check the bobbin case make sure that the fabric the elastic thread can move freely from the bobbin case yeah and then just go on sewing if the tension on the bobbin case is okay then the tension after sewing is done should be fine as well but you just need to check once in a while to make sure that there are no changes in the in the tension so this is what i was doing when i get to an a the edge i just turn the fabric round to do the next line of sharing when i get to that middle part where i'm connecting the two i reinforce it skip to the next and repeat so you need a lot of patience for this maybe my process took about three hours yeah, if I'm not wrong, maybe three and a half hours, I don't know. So you need a lot of patience to do these lines of sharing one after the other. Also confirming that the tension is okay and your garment can stretch all the way. So we are at the edge here and I regretted actually sewing the sharing all the way to the edge. I should have left around two inches to hem the, the waistline of my pants. But as you can see, I did not. So if you do this, please leave around two inches at the top of your pants for hemming the waistline because this is what i'm doing right now trying to hem the waistline am i oh not yet i'm still working on the sharing so if you leave around two inches hemming the waistline is going to be much more easier than what i what you have to deal with if you have done sharing all the way to the top so remember that don't be like me <laughs> anyway so now i'm going to separate the two pieces because you remember i had tried to they had sort of joined together because i was doing the sharing with them together but now i want to separate them After the separation, you're just going to place right sides kissing and then match the crotch lines. So the front crotch, I'm going to pin them down and then I'm also going to pin the back crotch area. So that's the front and then this is the back. The back crotch is uh, always taller or longer than the front crotch. So after pinning them, I'm going to sew along those lines. Okay, I need to change my my thread from elastic to regular thread so if you want to do a lot of sharing you will need maybe two bobbin cases so that one bobbin case is just set to to sew with regular thread and then the other bobbin case is for elastic thread so you don't have to 
loosen and tighten your bobbin case whenever you change the thread in the bobbin case so my process is i have to tighten <laughs> and then just thread it normally so that you can do the the seam lines because we need to use a regular thread for the seam lines So after both the crotch lines are done, we are then going to do the inside seam, inseam. And so I'm just going to mark from the middle, the mid crotch, all the way to the hemline and I'm going to sew from hem to hem. At this point your pants are looking really small like they have shrinked because of the sharing But don't mind the shrinkage, they will still fit. Even though they look as if they are meant to be worn by a kid. <laughs> no, they're still your pants because you measured them and they will fit you. So I'm just going to turn them inside out, right side out. And we're going to work on the waistline so this was a challenge actually for me because i did the sharing all the way up to the last half an inch but if you left about two inches just for the fold of the waist it's going to be better it's going to be easier for you to actually fold that uh, waistline because we will be putting in elastic for the waistline so you need to fold enough uh, in a, a, a enough space for the in, like a casing for the elastic we're going to be putting in I'll put in like half an inch is it half an inch like quarter an inch of elastic it's very thin elastic so yeah for this design you don't have to go with like a fat elastic like a one inch elastic it's going to look weird so go with a thin elastic so the casing is just small the casing can be half an inch in width so like two inches is going to be enough for the casing of the elastic I had a hard time actually for f doing the casing but <laughs> I survived when you do this please remember to leave around two inches for the elastic casing anyway so right now I'm just pulling my elastic in because it was too thin like quarter quarter of an inch or something I had to double it up 
and I'm just threading it through If your waist is like 30 inches, use elastic uh, that is 26 inches, that's going to fit you better. So like minus 4 inches, minus 4 on your waist. So I was going to like tie a knot but I decided to just sew, sew them shut. And to do a couple of stitches over here because you don't want the elastic to be inside. You're wearing your trousers and then they just, the elastic bursts open and <laughs> then you, do, you start have to pull your you start pulling your trousers in public because the elastic inside the casing can no longer sit straight on your waist. Gosh, what am I saying? As in, make sure the elastic is secured, close up the casing, and we are actually done. These are your pants. Even though they look like they belong to like a baby or a kid or something, don't worry they just look ugly when they are not worn but if worn okay when worn this is how these pants look i love them i think that you can lounge at home in them i think that you can dress them up and go someplace i think they're a good fit they're a nice strip especially if you go with the really nice colors i i like these trousers anyway thank you for watching if you watched up to this point i appreciate you thank you so much i hope you subscribe i hope you stay okay <laughs> yeah comment down below with your thoughts on this one Ciao, thank you, bye, see you.